and singing in Sankirtan. And generally there are three artiks, important artiks in the day, uh, at sunrise, noon, and sunset. So at these times, especially, the devotees will gather in the temple and they'll offer arti. And um, uh, it's a very beautiful ceremony of greeting the Lord. And uh, they're actually part of Krishna's eternal pastimes. This is an advanced subject that we'll discuss with our uh, closer students. 23. One must hear about the Lord and his pastimes from Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and similar books. So, of course, everybody's hearing. Uh, that's what you're doing right now. 24. One must pray to the deity for his mercy. Yes. So, the deity being the central aspect of community life for the devotees, one should go before him, offer obeisances, and pray. 25. One should remember the deity. And 26. One should meditate upon the deity. 27. One should render some voluntary service. The deity is actually Krishna. So, as we develop a transcendental service relationship with the deity, we start to remember our original transcendental identity. You see, this is actually the process of self-realization, and it goes on um, around the temple deity. So the temple deity is not just a symbol. The temple deity is the very means of recalling our original identity. And worship of the deity is very important. 28. One should think of the Lord as one's friend. 29. One should offer everything to the Lord. 30. Especially, one should offer a favorite article, such as food or a garment, to the Lord. But take your favorite garment huh, or your favorite food and offer it directly to the deity. Uh, and then don't take the remnants. <laughs> Make a sacrifice. And this is very good. Krishna likes that. 31. One should take all kinds of risks and perform all endeavors for Krishna's benefit. So, I can't help but think of our adventures here in Chile and other places going way back into the end of the dirt road <laughs> and finding the funkiest village, you know, to establish a temple uh, where, the, where the air is pure and the water is drinkable right out of the streams and um, where the devotees are actually accepted and understood by the local people who welcome them. Uh, and this is our dream. And we, our inspiration has been to uh, find these places and to build up our community in them. And so far, we've been guided to a very good uh, result. So uh, we should be bold. We, we shouldn't be uh, chicken, you know. We should be willing to take risks. Uh, Krishna likes the devotees who take risks for his sake, for his purposes. And he likes to see that. Uh, because actually, in this life, there are no dangers. Uh, we're all spirit souls. We're all eternal. Nothing can harm us. Nothing can kill us. Maybe the body, but that's just an instrument that we use. So we find actually that if we take risks in Krishna's service, Krishna rewards us far more than uh, any of the risks that we run. In the long run especially. Uh, we find this is very true. So, be a little adventurous. Huh? Um, where is that? 32. In every condition, one should be a surrendered soul. Surrender to Krishna. 33. One should pour water on the Tulsi tree. Yes. 34. One should regularly hear Srimad Bhagavatam and similar literature. That's what you're doing now. 35. One should live in a sacred place like Matra, Vrindavan, or Dvorka. We covered that already. 36. One should offer service to the Vaishnavas, devotees. 
So, yeah, the devotees are very important because by their association, we come into the devotional service of Krishna. We want the devotees to be pleased with us. And this is all I do. Huh? You think, oh, he's the spiritual master. He's the big, big leader. No, I'm the big, big servant. <laughs> I serve all the devotees by giving transcendental knowledge. See, this is the secret. Prabhupada writes in one of his purports that if you think, oh, now I'm a big, big devotee, then you're actually fallen. But if you think, oh, I'm a fool, if one remains a fool before his spiritual master, then he's the guru. If one remains a fool before his spiritual master, he becomes the guru. See, this is the secret. That one should remain always a fool and let the spiritual master instruct. Let the spiritual master lead. Uh, that's, when, that's his job. That's what he does. That's his service to you. And your service to him is to follow and to obey. Uh, until you also become qualified, then you can also be spiritual master. We want all of our disciples to become qualified. Okay, so 37. One should arrange one's devotional service according to one's means. So if you have very little means, then your devotional service can be humble. That's all right. But if you have greater means, then you should do greater service. Uh, not that, oh, this one devotee is giving 100%, and I'll do the same thing even though it's only 5% of what I could give. No. 100% means 100% of your capability. So if someone has a lot of talents and abilities, they should offer them to Krishna. And if someone has a lot of money or a lot of property, they should offer them to Krishna. If someone has a big position or fame, he should offer that to Krishna, uh, like George Harrison did. So in this way, according to one's means, uh, one should do devotional service, whether they are uh, rich or poor or famous or unknown or whatever, they should engage all of that in Krishna's service. 38. In the month of Kartika, October and November, one should make arrangements for special services. And we'll cover that during Kartika. During Janmashtami, the time of Krishna's appearance in this day, one should observe a special service. Well, we do every Janmashtami. 40. One should do whatever is done with great care and devotion for the deity. That's our attitude. The deity is real. The deity is Krishna. Hey, shh, quiet, I'm trying to read. <laughs> You're laughing at me. Um, 41. One should relish the pleasure of Bhagavatam reading among devotees and not among outsiders. Sometimes people, uh, professional reciters, will recite the Bhagavatam. And this is called Bhagavatam Saptaha, where they recite the Bhagavatam in seven days as it was originally recited by Shukadeva Goswami. But they charge money, and therefore they're simply professional men. And Srila Prabhupada says that we should not associate with people like that. In fact, one of the offenses um, that we read just a little bit ago was to accept money uh, for reciting the scriptures. And this is not recommended either to do it or to hear it. 40. Uh, sorry, 42. One should associate with devotees who are considered more advanced. Well, this is a general rule. If you can find devotees who are more advanced than you are, then you should go to them and associate with them as closely as possible. Serve them. Huh? A servant is always welcome. Uh, someone who comes and they really want to help out will always be accepted. 43, one should chant the holy name of the Lord as much as possible. Um, that means 24 hours a day, uh, or as close to that as you can get. And 44, 
one should live in the jurisdiction of Matra. Matra district of Matra is the uh, the like the, the county around Vrindavan, and uh, if possible, one should live there. But if that's not possible, then one should live in a temple or other devotional community. Now, the total regulative principles come to an aggregate of 64 items. As we have mentioned, the first are the primary 10 regulative principles, then come the secondary 10 regulative principles, and added to these are 44 other activities. So altogether, there are 64 items for discharging the regulative practice of devotional service. Out of these 64 items, five items, namely worshiping the deity, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, associating among the devotees, Sankirtan, and living in Matra, 